So I'm going to begin with this piece, which leads into the work that you see here in the exhibition. So I've always had an interest in uh, history and transformations of historical narratives. So as a painter, I've borrowed from the tradition of epic history painting, which was dominated by men in the past in Europe, and, and depicted extreme images of landscape and history of war and societies. So my work looks to change this visage of a larger sort of manly public narrative into something that is built from a feminine narrative of individual struggle and personal ruin. So as such, I utilize the ruin as a metaphorical setting for my constructed narratives. So each piece that I do has certain layers that carry symbolic content for me in expressing this translation of public to private narrative. For instance, the lines are historical battle plans, face-to-face -face battles. The lines change within the work to represent lines of communication and miscommunication, problems with language and defensive and offensiveness that occur in regular life, perhaps like through something like an argument. So with it, each piece, you know, there are often these male-female figures which form a kind of questioning and attention. So within the work, you see reference to a historical painting. This is uh, Turner's Disaster at Sea. The piece is weighted with history, as is the history of painting itself. Uh, the moss surrounding the work in a larger installation was in reference to the erosion and endurance of certain historical So following the completion of this work in the summer of 2014, I spent four weeks in Ireland as an artist in residence at Shankill Castle. So I wanted to produce a piece that would respond to the environment, which was very damp and green. And so I chose to work with raw linen, water-soluble pencil, and gouache, which would hopefully change with the weather there. So the reason that I was so excited to do this residency was because of the 12th century ruins that existed on the site and that I had access to on a daily basis. I spent a lot of time there drawing. So this piece was meant to be vertical. I was working uh, in this barn with very high ceilings. So early on in my time there, I took a visit to Dublin, where I went to the National Archaeology Museum of Ireland. And there I saw a special exhibition of the Vikings of the Irish Sea, which I was fascinated by. And this is because um, that's where my surname originates, as one of those Vikings that invaded the area. So this had you know, clear personal significance to me. And so I decided to borrow from this larger epic narrative built uh, at, at, in order to build my own narrative by depicting objects of personal significance taken from this exhibition. So during this visit, you know, I also saw the Book of Kells, and so the arrangement of the work is in this design of the illuminated manuscript. So when the piece was completed, I then cut it up into 20 different pieces, which would be placed in the environment outside. So these are some images of the install, and this was about two days before I left Ireland. Um, I had been going through some of my own sort of personal struggles at the time. I was working to, you know, disentangle myself from difficult relationship dynamics. So hence this became the title of the piece. I was thinking a lot about life and death, and so the setting in a cemetery was truly significant. So this is one of the fragments as embedded on the site. So this was a comb and it suggests this removal of knots, working to extract oneself from a difficult situation. So with this work, I became more interest in, interested in the life of the art object and how it can transform and be affected by its environment. So it took on one form as I drew and painted it in the studio, and it then became something of a performance piece as I installed it on site, and then became something else uh, as I embedded it as a site-specific installation, and later it would tr transform even further. So this work moved from my personal narrative into its own narrative. 
you know, creating its own biography. I left this piece on site for 35 days total. It was then shipped back to me in the U.S., and I was amazed by how the pieces had eroded in such a short time. I felt like um, some sort of anthropologist or art restorer that had received this newfound artifact that had been in the ground for more like a thousand years rather than one month. So I began piecing the work uh, back together and you can see here how much had been eaten away by nature and one piece was actually completely lost. I then added my own pattern embellishments to be like a museum simulation of what it had once looked like, however purposefully incorrect. So I added the missing element in with a different element. And this, like this sort of game of, you know, passing down history with missing bits of information that could only be guessed at or inferred. So on the side, on the back side of the piece um, is natural dried sheet moss. I transformed the piece into a tapestry, and so it took on another stage in its life as the art object, but still was reflective of my feminine perspective, despite the Viking battle origins of these objects. So I teach study abroad in Italy, and that next winter I was in Florence with students visiting various sites. I took my usual massive number of photographs and was particularly interested in the way in which my neck so often hurt from looking up at the ceilings in these, uh, at these paintings. I thought about how very different that was in comparison to American culture, where we are so often looking down at our cell phones. And so when I returned to the United States, I decided to produce a work that would suspend from the ceiling. It was also, I was also kind of looking at this trompe l'oeil quality of certain pieces and also, you know, the painted marbling, which really wasn't marble at all. And I was very interested in this idea of something trying to appear to be something that it is not. So this piece is titled Ferratory, which means um, a portable shrine containing relics of a saint. In this work, the saint is perhaps a female self and is a reflection on the construct of marriage or on structured gender relationships. So this is the work from below, which became quite transparent when suspended from such height. I continu continued to work with this idea of the tapestry and epic narrative. Uh, the piece extends upward at a kind of square which highlights a female figure. The rest of the figures are male. The swimmers are symbolic of struggle to me. I use these swimmers in my work in the way that they sort of parallel what we go through in life. In order to keep one's head above the water, to breathe and not to drown, you must go through these repetitive actions, moving the arms and kicking the legs. And in life, we do a similar thing, waking up each day, getting ready, going to work, or taking care of family members, earning money so that we can buy food, pay rent, and continue living. The piece is based off of a piece by Andrea Mantegna in the bridal chamber of the Ducal Palace, which is called the Camera dei Sposi. Uh, and this dates from 1465 to 1474 and is located in Mantua, Italy. And this is a, um, something that I had seen a very long time ago on my very first trip abroad when I was only 21 years old. I would say that it represents a hopefulness to me uh, when I was young and my girlish thoughts were quite different regarding love and marriage. So the images on the tapestry um, are from photos of ruins that I had taken in Ireland and placed in this sort of Renaissance form. So I'm very much interested in these cultural overlaps and creating confusions of place and memory, fragments of what we know and what we invent. The floating figures create a similar feel to the odd perspective of the Pudis in Mantegna's piece.
So I love this older couple lying down in my sort of created bridal chambers. This, um, the piece is also paired with these moss paintings on the wall that you see there uh, together as an installation. The linen piece is double-sided with the pattern on the back. So in this exhibition you could see it mainly from below, and a second exhibition one could view from both sides. So the ropes hanging down became significant to the piece, like a circus tent, and the astroturf like a putting green where these spheres were hanging. It was something of a fantasy, a game with kind of odd perspective. The ropes to me also suggested something perhaps a bit darker as well, the possibility of feeling bound by a relationship, a suggestion of hidden elements and complexities that hold one in a position as invisible ties. And so the single female figure lying below also became significant to me. So if you look at the tapestry alone, there is only one female figure, which I highlight when the piece is put into a structure. The male figures don't represent possible relationships or are symbolic of social constructs that cause one to respond to relationships in certain ways. And the babies on the fringes are children, which affect how the piece retains its structure as the children that often hold a marriage together. So in the installation, you can see the oval moss paintings mimic the putting green of the astroturf below. And so they become also something like a game. So the moss represents a kind of erosion of social constructs. But you can also see that the moss is still quite lush and vivid green, very much alive and affecting us. The blue objects below are cast rubber leaves, fake nature, and so there is a play on what is reality versus what is not, what is fantasy in one's mind versus how things truly are or become. So paired with a large linen hanging piece are these wall pieces which are all fragments of romantic paintings, focusing on the hands of the figures, all painted by men, and you see the perspective of male and female roles in this. And so with these, you see a change in active versus submissive roles. Also, a, you know, covering of clothing versus nakedness and vulnerability. So here you can see how the suspended linen acts like a tent or has the appearance of a mountainous landscape with patterning on back. I also utilized fabric and ribbon on the edging of this that I had used in my wedding on the very day of my marriage. So here you can see some of the pattern which is representative of how we tend to repeat ourselves and rehash relationships. The suspension is an uneasiness, an endless precariousness of our situation. Perhaps a wondering of when it will all fall, keeping the balls in the air of everything that we do each day to uphold our lives. Thank you.